You're listening to the Coop Homeschool Podcast. This is your podcast for community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling. Hi, this is Mandy. And Jessica. And this is The The Coop. Coop. So today we're talking about independent homeschooling. Yes. A.K.A. How to Get My Me Time. Amen. (laughs) Uh, we're going to be talking about different ideas of what you can do in your home and how to set them up so you can be hands off, but know they're getting a good education. Yes. Anyways. So first let's do our scoop on the coop. Sure. I'll go. Um, so this week has been interesting because my daughter has been filming movies with her cousin. And so I had to teach her how to use iMovie. I love to that. To edit them. Yes. So that was really exciting for me. I use iMovie for some of my own professional work, for my um, dance teaching, and then, of course, for our coop. Mm. Um, but teaching my daughter was something new because I think I just barely get by an iMovie, let alone having to teach someone and wanting to make sure that they know how to navigate and have the basics down. So it was kind of big for me was to be able to do that. And so it's just really fun. Um, kind of a unexpected learning opportunity was to teach her how to use iMovie to edit her own movies. I love that. She'll be yeah. teaching you some things. Yeah, exactly. And she'll figure it all out and have to teach me. So my scoop is I just got back from Colorado last week and it was really neat because we spent the week at my brother and sister-in-law's house and they live on a farm. Yes. So I think there were over 50 animals there. That's amazing. And then the wild snake that, you know, slithered its way to the baby bunnies. Um, But my niece has a business and sells baby bunnies and guinea pigs and she used to breed quails as well. Oh, Wow. Yeah, so, uh, and then she also has a horse for the summer. Did you know you can rent a horse for the summer for a certain amount of time? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then it's not a big commitment. That's wild. Yeah, and then you can do your horseback riding lessons at the same time and then get your practice at home. That's really cool. So, yeah, for those uh, maybe Midwesterners have that option. Um, But it was just a really fun time. The kids were always busy. Um, There's alpacas. And there are three of them, and they were always curious um, about what we were doing. And their big round eyes were always looking to see what yeah. was going on. Is anyone scared? No, mm-hmm. um, I'd be. Scared. And they're baby alpacas. Oh, okay. They're, so how how tall? Um, are they? they probably came to my chin. Yeah, and it's mostly their long neck, and they're sweet. Okay, they're so right. sweet, and they all go to the bathroom in the same spot. Yeah, it's funny. Like potty trained. Exactly. It's crazy. And then the horse always wanted to be where the alpacas were. So it was neighing and really upset if it was in Aww. its horse enclosure and seeing the boys, the little alpacas running around. How funny. It was just really fun to watch. That's and neat. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk about independent homeschooling. Yes. Um, I think I'll go first by talking about some of the things I've set up in the home. Mm-hmm. I have... Uh, Actually, now four folding tables set up for Legos. Oh, yes. And the rule is the Legos cannot leave the table. Got it. And Mm -hmm. so they can stay out and be as messy or as organized or as built up as they want, but they have to stay. But it started off with just one table, which makes way more sense. Right. But since there's three kids and they all needed their space and and I know it's an engineering skill, I'm going to lean into it, right? Right. And one of my kids is a storyteller, so she actually makes up stories for her little town and my son's town is called Hapkind. Oh, cute. Yeah. So it's just really, really cute. And, um, I have a, or I usually have a table that's a home art studio and then you set out quality art supplies. Right. And it's just a really neat way for them to have a space to go at any time of the day. Right. And just work independently with the watercolors or the pastels or, um, there's even watercolor crayons that you can draw with and then you spray with water or can smear and just having quality art supplies out for them mm-hmm. with canvases and they each have their own spiral uh, canvas notebook that they Ooh, can use. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So um, it's like watercolor paper. So it's pretty nice. thick and yeah. And then, um, so whatever people want for whatever your child is interested in, right? So if it's building or marble mazes or snap circuits, you could just set out a table where it's always out. Right. And they can come and go as they want. That's really cool. Yeah. And then um, they... When they get a new Lego kit, that's like a whole hour I know I have to myself. Yes. And so I can get things done, make phone calls, and it doesn't have to be a TV moment. And that's what I love about it. Like, I know they're doing a huge interest 
something that they're super, that's super educational for them. And I don't have to do anything yeah. for it. Hands off. Yeah. And so, um, I really like the whole table idea. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, yeah. So the idea of these independent activities means that mm. we're really trying to set them up. So sometimes it requires a lot of intentionality on our part the night before or whatever you're trying to come up with. So, you know, you knew that you wanted them to have time with those Legos. And so you probably looked for those kits and had them on hand, just waiting for an opportunity that you could use them and give them to them. Yeah. Well, um, what happened? Oh, it was at the science museum when I saw that they were That's playing right. with them, yeah. making their Google town with, with your daughter yes. and uh, some other of our coop group kids. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, they like the free play Legos, not just the kits. Cause usually they put together the kits and then never see them again, never right. even play with them again. So then I got them free form. Legos and that's when and then I got them the plates. Yes, and then I set them out and they went to town That's so cool. Yeah, so I didn't know that it would grow into what it is, right. but I'm glad it did It's definitely yeah. a big interest right now that I know is not gonna last forever Right, sometimes it just takes that little spark and you know, my daughter's a little different She likes the kits because she likes the characters, but well, and, she's a storyteller and they love the kits, right. too I, I think I need to t test out to right. see which ones they would choose. Right. Yeah, because you have one who likes to take them apart and uh -huh. rebuild them yeah. and experiment and play with them differently. Oh, yeah, and, she'll make yeah. a whole table out of something that used to be a jewelry box or something, you know. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how my daughter is. You know, she the sky or yeah, the sky's the limit. You know, yeah. everything is a possibility in her world of storytelling. And so I think sometimes the freeform Legos can be a little too much for her. Yeah, what do you build? What right. do you do? Right. Yeah. So she likes the characters and then from the characters and whatever story she starts with, then things happen. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. And you can buy those Lego kits of just characters yes. and then they can put them together yes. and they're like literally fighting over which characters yes. they can oh, they yes. can have like the little baby in the carriage. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. So they my daughter really likes the dragon Lego kits. Oh. Yeah, so there was the Lego elves and there was a couple dragons in that series. It's a TV show. Oh. A Netflix series, I think. Um, Lego Elves. Mm -hmm. oh. And so it was pretty great. She loved that series. And then there were down. some Lego kits. I think they they phased out those Lego kits, unfortunately. Oh, but she did get a couple of those dragons. And then her and her cousin, they always like, not call each other. They use my phone. They use Marco Polo on my phone and uh, <laughs> my sister-in-law's phone to talk to each other about what to bring over to each other's oh, houses. That's so yeah. cute. Bring your Lego dragons, you know, and they play Lego dragons. So do they her, fall apart though? Yeah, oh. but they just put them back oh, okay. together. And now the Lego dragons are probably really like <laughs> misformed at yeah. this point, you know, missing a whole wing yeah. or a whole flank. I don't know, but dystopian yeah. dragons. Yeah. And they've become dystopian <laughs> dragons, but you know, like you said, giving them the opportunity, setting it up for them and continuing to expand it so that they can continue to play independently is really amazing. Yeah. And I think I used to do that without realizing it with those sensory bins sure. and with those pinto, those dried pinto beans yes. and having little tiny shovel or trowels and, right. and the little characters and, and they would, they would spend at least an hour doing that. Absolutely. And just the feeling of it. And then I've tried water beads and things like that. Right. So just having things that they can independent play with knowing their boundaries. Right. Exactly. You know, you don't want them throwing water beads at each other and having, no, you know, not really. having no. those all squished around the house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's a, a limit to some of those activities being independent, but the Legos are pretty benign. Oh, totally. You know, if, if you don't have a little one who's going to choke on them in the house, mm -hmm. then it's really mm -hmm. no big deal, especially when the boundary is keep them on the table. Right. That's and then, all. and, and then if it's snap circuits, they're a little bit of an older child right. and it's fun to see what they they yeah. love to look for different things to create with the lights that turn on, the propeller yeah. that goes out. So cool. They'll spend time doing that. So having a space with that out. Yes. I noticed like I put the jump ropes away where they go. They don't jump rope anymore. But when they were just laying out, they were jump roping anytime right. they had a moment to do nothing. They right. would jump rope. So yeah. just having some things set up. Exactly. So that's working independently. And then um, let's talk about now media. Yes. So I have a favorite guy on YouTube that I've mentioned before and have a blog about, um, Mr. DeMeo. Yes. And he uh, is a current fifth grade teacher, was a third grade teacher, and he's hilarious. Yes. And he does these videos that are, I crack up, the kids crack up, it's toots and giggles yes. and 
solar system, planets, that kind of thing. But right. also the Statue of Liberty just came out this week. Right. I Body saw that. systems mm -hmm. came out a couple weeks ago. Um, there's the Titanic, the pyramids. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was he's just a great video guy to sit in front of YouTube. Right. And they can watch a whole hour of it and totally learn so much. Right. While you get things set up, prepped, right. cleaned up, have some me time make the phone calls you need to make, yes. and you know they're enjoying a good educational moment. Exactly. So it's just a matter of finding somebody, like vetting somebody ahead of time yes. that you trust. Hopefully the ads on there aren't going to be- That's the challenge. Inappropriate, yep. Right. But um, even if you want to sit in the same room and yeah. you know, you could always skip an ad. My kids skip the ads anyways. Right. So yeah, it, um, I, I like having that option. And then to piggyback that with a, maybe even a, a virtual play date. Yes. With like yeah. a Zoom call or something. Yeah, we had a lot of experience with that uh, this 2020. Yeah. Um, so we did virtual play dates, and at first we organized a lot of the activities for our COOP group on our virtual play dates. Um, and then we realized we didn't even need to do as much mm -hmm. of that. We just would help them with the legwork of getting set up and making sure they were in a safe Zoom meeting room and everything. Mm -hmm. And then they could kind of just be on their own. And not all of our kids loved it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But one of mine. Yes. I mean, she wants to do one all the time, every day, and yeah. she can navigate it better than me. I know what I'm doing, Mom. Right? You know? I know. They know everything. <laughs> uh, so much. Yes. <sighs> but uh, that's why we need our me time. Because yeah, exactly. they know everything. Yeah. Um, at eight years old. Um, but yes. So my daughter had kind of the love hate relationship with it. She mm -hmm. loved doing a Zoom with your daughter. Oh yeah. But that's well, because... and they would put on costumes. Yes. And they do drawing together. Hours. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I think one of them was about three hours long. Yes. That actually gave me intimate time with my other two. Yes. And I could play cards with them. I right. could cuddle with them. And it, it just really freed me up. Just even having one kid occupied. Right. With something to me that is quality. Right. Like spending that time with their closest friends. Is really important. Right. It was filling their cup. Yeah. Especially during a, a really weird season. Totally. Having to be quarantined. You know, it was really awkward. They weren't going to their activities. All of our Coop Group events were canceled, mm -hmm. and that was really crazy. And we were looking forward to them. So those virtual play dates were kind of um, just, you know, just enough to make them feel connected to each other still while we had to be at home. And then our girls just uh, really went to town on it. They yeah. They had a blast. And then they did um, a virtual sleepover. Oh yeah, yeah. So they were they. I think they got started at five p.m. Probably they got started at five p.m. They ate dinner yeah. together in front of the computers. <laughs> so I'm like catering to my daughter, oh, bringing yeah. her dinner in the playroom. Here you go. Here's your food. Yeah. And then um, oh, and then then yeah. then somebody in the group decided that they get to have dessert. Oh. So then we're all like, oh, okay, okay, okay. let's dig through the freezer. Yeah. Here's an old ice cream sandwich. Yeah, yeah. yeah what are all these crystals all no, over it? No big deal. <laughs> um, and then, so then finally we'd have them sign off at 8.30 or so. But they would also take, like, turn the camera on mute or however you do that, and they'd get their jammies on. Yes. Then they yeah. would be zooming in their jammies. Right. Yeah. Sophia would go and lay in the bed in the playroom because we have a little bed up there, and she'd Aww. lay in the bed like she was going to say goodnight and go to sleep right there. And and then they would go to bed. They'd say goodnight and go to sleep, presumably. Yeah. And then they'd get back on, what time did they meet? Was I think it? it was like 8 a.m. Okay, it was 8. So. And then they eat their breakfast together. Yes. Yeah, because I remember one of them, one of the mornings was Saturday, and I think I went to work and had and to kick her off. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had to kick her off of their oh, morning right, right. sleepover resuming time. Yeah, yeah. so it, independent homeschooling, time is not about just keeping your kid busy it's 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 purposely and intentfully giving them really neat things to do to focus right. on that don't need your attention right and to just think of that ahead of time right and to make sure you plan that into your day to have something out there so that you do get a break it's not from 8 a.m to 3 p.m so right. i have something i yes. like to talk about yeah, yeah so when we are in the midst of like homeschooling and we're we have a math workbook and we we are doing our copy work from the mm -hmm. Bible and we're doing our gratitude journal and um, there's probably uh, an usborn book in there right you know telling time or whatever when we uh, they have a pile like that 
to do, I call it solo time. Right. And I say, you can do solo, and I'll show them how to do that one or two pages in the math workbook for five right. minutes, right? Right. And then they know how to do it. Yep. And they can do all the other things in it. They know to go to the next verse in the Bible. They, they know the requirements with the gratitude journal. Exactly. And they know it just has to be done by the time we, we do our dailies. Right. Or, or, and review our solo time the next day. So they normally, I had them doing it in the morning saying, do it first thing in the morning. Right. But then they'd be like, well, I don't really want to get up to do that. So I said, well, do it whenever you want. So sometimes right. when I say, okay, free time the rest of the day, whatever, they will literally go and say, I'm going to do my solo time right now. Right. So I'm like, whatever, just, okay. and then I have a rule. If you wake me up or if you come in my room before 10 o'clock, sometimes it's nine o'clock. But before 10 o'clock, we'll just go ahead and get started on the day, you know, which means sit down and do our dailies and review their solo time. And so they definitely leave me alone in the morning. Right. They love their free time and I love them having their free time. Yes. I want that for them. And I think there's huge merit in free time. We've talked a lot yeah, about that. Definitely. But they're up at like 6.30 or 7. So by the time I come out of my room all ready for the day at 10 a.m., They've played Monopoly. Right. You know, they may have even practiced their piano. Like, you know, my right. eight-year-old might jump on and practice. And um, they've already gotten themselves their breakfast. And yeah. they've got everything handled and they're ready to go. And I've had time to myself. Right. I just wish I used it better. Don't we all? I, I wish I was more efficient and not just <laughs> scrolling. scrolling. Yeah. And, um, and every once in a while, I check the emails that I haven't checked for two weeks. But... Right. Um, but it's just nice to have that time that and know that they're doing stuff independently, um, like games or yeah. or their art table right. or their Lego table, right? Um, their solo time. Yeah, there's definitely a huge lesson in that. Just you know, we've talked about this before. It was just giving them the opportunity to be bored, exactly, to figure it out because they're not always going to have someone to entertain them. You know, they're not going to always just have a room full of things all the time. So right. figure it out. You mm -hmm. know what. Play that game. Play that Monopoly game. You know, mm -hmm. especially in your home where you've got the three kids. You've got two other people to ask to yeah. do something. I mean, they, they have built-in playmates. Right. I mean, when we do a play date with your your son and daughter, that's if it's just one of my kids, that's basically what I have here. They right. could easily figure it out. Oh, totally. So I don't feel guilty at all about that. No, it's important skills. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And I want them to bond as friends and yeah. not just as siblings. Yeah. Now, see, I used to do the solo time thing a lot um, when I started homeschooling. So mm -hmm. when she went into TK, um, I would do that. I would prep everything the night before, and I would leave something very intentionally on her desk. So it was mm -hmm. just one thing. So there wasn't an overload of choices for her at that time because she was four. And I would leave the one thing. Maybe it was the stamps with all the letters. Then she could just do whatever she wanted. Oh, fun. Yeah, yeah, you know, it could have been a puzzle or whatever it was. I would leave it's it there. It's just exposure. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just exposure. It gives her something to look forward to. She knew there'd be something on her desk when she woke up. And then I kind of fell out of that practice. And, you know, now we have our new big playroom, homeschool room. And I, I thought it would be great having all of her activity books for her to look at and everything right there. But what happens is is she doesn't really look at them as unique items. Hmm. She just sees the whole shelf and is like, nah, those are boring. Oh. So I need to get back into it. And actually it's a big um, Charlotte Mason thing, the morning hmm. basket. So I know a lot of people, you see that on Pinterest or you see it talked about a lot, the morning basket. So it's very intentional with either books that you're going to read together or however you want to set up your morning basket is kind of my version That's of it. That's so right? cute. I love yeah. that. So it's the morning basket and it's literally usually a basket and maybe you have new library books and you put a couple in there for the next morning and maybe it's the same things for the entire week. But the morning basket is just kind of an opportunity to do this solo time. Okay. Um, and so, you, you know, for some families, they choose everybody has the same basket. And, mm -hmm. you know, maybe one of the books is the read aloud and anything you want. So I need to get back into it into that because my little guy is about to be preschool age. Mm. And so I was just thinking that that's fun for him to have his own little basket it's to so wake up cute. to. And, and every really once in a while you could put in a little surprise. Exactly. Like a, a little, little, little gift car. they can open up or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He loves his cars and he plays for hours with his cars. Oh. And so that's definitely a toy I'm like, okay to invest in. Oh, you yeah. know, if he's going to play with that toy for hours, 
we're going to go for it, you know, or a track or whatever That's it is totally. to, yeah. to encourage that independent play mm -hmm. is really important to me. You know, I'm not trying to just entertain them long enough to get exactly. something done. You know, that is what we end up using the TV for once in a while. I want them to learn to be independent and to encourage that. Exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. what the idea of, of this independent homeschool activity is all about. You know, and I have some baskets in my in the corners of my dining right. room right yes, now. Yes, you do. And the younger one definitely has to have more help with it. Like she yeah. definitely, but there's also kinetic sand in there. Right. They know the rules required. So you do have to prep some of the rules, sure. but they know to get the tray for the kinetic sand and they can put that on there and, and the trays are all in there. And that's awesome. Um, they have those little plus plus tubes where you can right. put the little pluses together to create That's there's true. stuff they can do on their own and i use a lot of those when i do read aloud right to keep their yes. hand mm -hmm. to keep their hands busy so they can right. listen and not be distracted and yeah. because what will happen is when i do read alouds they get so into what they're doing if it's a pretend story that yes. one of mine's making up she's i'm actually having to talk over her because she has her own story the characters like, are talking to each other wait, yeah. Oh, you're not even listening to what the characters are actually saying. <laughs> like, hang on. Yeah. So, so I figured out, you know, stuff like Which that, Play-Doh like. and and uh, Play-Doh cutters and and yeah. and that's really good for sense people with sensory issues yeah. to to touch the water beads and the the kinetic sand and the Play-Doh and things yeah. like that. So, um, was there anything else we want to say about independent no. schooling? No, I think we covered it. Yeah. So, um, joy for the week. Yeah. All right, I'll go with my joy. Mm -hmm. So I started with the scoop being about my daughter getting into iMovie. And the joy is just really watching her become this storyteller. Mm. I've been calling her a storyteller since she was probably three. Um, she's lived in stories. That's just the best way I've always been able to describe her. And watching her get into writing her own stories, now sharing it with her cousin. I love that it's with mm -hmm. her cousin. It's really cute. Yeah. yeah. It's something she, my daughter started completely on her own. Actually, that's not true. It started with her aunt, oh. her great aunt. Oh. Um, mm -hmm, her great aunt's like her third grandmother. So her oh. great aunt um, encouraged her to, to write a book. And she like folded the paper. Mm -hmm. and, and so she started her book series like that. And then um, just recently, she got all of those books that she created with her aunt and um, brought the whole series home. So I hadn't really read them yet, but she uh. created a character, a tagline. Like the character had very um, obvious traits that carried through the whole series. It was really well done. Wow. Like she built a great Well, character. when you think of all the reading that she's done, yeah. listening and actually like using her eyes, right. you know, in both ways. That's such a wealth of knowledge for her. Exactly. Yeah, it just yeah. naturally soaked so it all up. She wanted to type them. So, great opportunity to practice her typing. You know, she's only done a couple of really basic typing programs online or whatever. Um, but she loves to try and type. So, I was like, okay, no problem. So, I showed her how to, to put it on the computer. And so, she started typing them. And then, that's when she brought her cousin in. Is She she showed her the stories. And her cousin like, those are really funny. And so, her cousin's 11. So, they're 8 and 11. And then, they started writing their own together. And mm -hmm. then, decided to film them. So, then they made them into episodes. Her little book series into episodes. That's so cute. Right. Which is what ended up a couple weeks later. Inspiring the her iMovie. to yes, edit the movie to make a real episode. And now, they've moved on to a whole new series. Oh, yes. how fun. And then... Last week, my daughter was feeling a little bit bored and kind of had these new ideas because now she's writing new series on her own also. So she's got all of these little things going on, and now she has her own book series that she's writing. And so she um, wanted to film her own series, no. and she borrowed my wigs. And oh. <laughs> yes, she was different character. I know I hadn't told Since you Since you this have yet. so many yeah. wigs, uh -huh. too. Yeah. <laughs> well, dance teacher. Yes, dance teacher, lots of costumes, stuff at home, hats, That's crazy so stuff. Cute. She was different characters. A couple of them may have had accents. <laughs> So she, and she, so you know she's just starting filmmaking, so she doesn't know necessarily that she could film all of one character's parts. Oh yeah, at one time and cut oh, them together. So, she's, <laughs> so yes, you saw her. I was going. Well, she's changing back and forth. You know, she knows she can she can stop filming because she knows I can put them together for her. So she presents me with twenty two. I'm so sorry. I know you did this. So you went through this. But anyway, it's really just, it brings me so much joy. Did you say no like I story. did? No, I did it for I was her. like, no. I did this. Okay. I 
Let's yeah. do it. Mine didn't have much yeah. as much thought as hers. Though. No, yeah. yeah hers so. was very intentional. And it was very well mm-hmm. planned out. It was scripted. So, and what was it? The new kid in school. So she did a whole, oh. like, a whole episode, two episodes of like school kids. There was principals okay. and teachers. She might want to revisit those Diary of a Wimpy Kids. Yeah, she might want to read those. Um, I think she's she wants to read before, like the, hasn't she? The the Judy Bloom. Oh um, yeah, for books. Tales yeah. of I Tales I of have that grade, nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I have it with my name on it from elementary school, and I don't even uh, remember it at all. Oh, I yeah yeah. Um, There's I'm that one in my Budgemania. And, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, I think we it's should all do those. a little book club with our own kids for that. That'd be really cute. That would be really fun. Okay, what's your joy? Okay, well, I'm going to refer to my scoop on the coop too. Oh, funny. We didn't plan that. I know. So, uh, in it, with all that farming and animals, so my kids have done horseback riding before and they've right. done um, horse show and everything, but they've never gotten to ride a horse bareback. Oh. So since when when you have a horse on the property, you can decide if you want to saddle it or not. And so my niece, who's 17, she likes to ride bareback. How crazy. Yeah. And she's just holding on to the reins. There's nothing else to hold okay, on so to. Okay, so the horse does have, have reins. reins. Okay. Yeah. And then, but there's nothing on okay. it. So the first time she just put them on themselves with helmets. And then the second time I saw them, they were holding her, no helmets. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh well, huh? I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I, yes. I moved on from that. But I, what I loved was that they could actually feel the horse under their, you know, yeah, under their that's legs. Wild. What a cool thing. Yeah. You know, you would never be allowed to do that if you were taking lessons no, somewhere. Yeah. So the fact that they got to do that, I thought was pretty cool and really brought me joy. And then really cool. like you were saying with their cousin, that they're doing yes. these things that are making a big impact right. in their life. These new experiences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With their cousin. Yeah. You know, sweet. so and they'll always have that. Yeah. They'll always know the first time they rode a horse without a saddle. Yeah. It's so, it was so cool. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And it was just beautiful with the the view in the background, this white horse, no saddle. Yeah. It's just, yeah. you know, with my kid on it. And in Colorado. It's very, yeah. Uh, does your, do your kids watch Spirit? They, uh, Ruby used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. eight-year-old, yeah. yeah. Our eight-year-olds are kindred spirits. Yeah, if you oh, totally. Noticed. <laughs> yeah, so of course she has. Yeah. Yeah, Augie can sing the song now. My oh. two-and-a-half-year-old, he sings the song. Yeah. I have to hear that. That's so yeah. cute. Yeah, just the I'm writing free part. I'm writing free. Yeah, he <laughs> likes that part a lot. Cute. Yep. yep. All right, so that's it. Yep. That's Thanks. independent homeschooling. Mm-hmm.